Hi everyone, this is Nathan with TheEbookReader.com. For this video, I'm going to give a comparison review between the Kindle Voyage here on the right and the Kobo Aura H2O. So these are like two of the best ebook readers for the year. Uh, I got the these placed in the sun right now because I want to kind of try to show the differences with the screen so you can kind of see some shadowing on the screen. That's just because there's like shadows outside and stuff. But um, So like, yeah, on the screen it really looks lighter over on this side just because it's closer to the sun. So like right off the bat, the screen looked brighter on this one. but just sort of how the sun's hitting it uh, in some ways. Uh, let's go ahead and look at these really small fonts here because I wanted to show these real quick just because that's where the uh, Kindle Voyage excels the most with its 300 pixel per inch screen. So this is the smallest font setting as you can see right there. And this isn't the smallest font setting on the Kobo Aura H2O. It's pretty close as far as the Kindle goes. I can't really see a whole lot of difference to be honest with you as far as the comparison of the fonts go because it seems like the the Aura H2O here uses slightly bolder fonts, even though this is the uh, these both have the same font set on both of these. Uh, this isn't the smallest font set setting on the Kobo Aura H2O. This is the smallest font on the Kindle. The Kobo goes a lot smaller. I mean, there's still several font small, smaller font sizes. It goes really tiny. So let's go ahead and bring up the smallest one on it. Yeah, it goes a lot smaller than the Kindle even. From a hardware perspective, obviously the screens are the biggest difference. Uh, the Obo or Kobo Aura H2O has the 6.8 inch ink screen and the Kindle has a, the regular 6 inch screen. Uh, the Kindle also has these page press buttons on the side, they're just sensors. Uh, and it has the flush screen, as you can see right there, it's more like a tablet where uh, everything's on one level. The Kobo Aura H2O has the infrared touch screen, so it has the indented screen. Um, and it doesn't have the two point touch like the Kindle. The Kindle has the two point touch with its touch screen. And like I said, it has these page sensors right here. You can set in the settings menu and you can have it so that they give feedback if you want. The, the device kind of vibrates or buzzes slightly if you uh, set that setting on. Okay, so uh, other hardware here. So the Kindle, it's a little bit thinner. It's got these really tapered edges and obviously the smaller design. It's got this sort of tough texture on the back. That uh, power button's right there. And then um, the Kobo or H2O with its larger design. It's a little bit heavier and thicker of course and it's got this uh, soft texture on the back. The coating's kind of similar feeling. It's kind of got that soft feel. So one of the biggest difference with the Kobo Aura H2O aside from the fact that it's waterproof is the fact that it has a micro SD card slot down here. So you got expandable memory. Both of them have four gigabytes uh, standard and they both have the same processor. So I mean there's not a whole lot of difference uh, as far as speed is concerned though the Kindle does generally seem to be a little bit faster as far as page turns and stuff like that goes. Alright so let's go ahead and compare the front lights a little bit now that um, in a darker room out of the direct sunlight so each of these devices has a front light. The Kindle has this feature where it uses an automatic bright, uh, front light and it has a sensor up here so it actually works pretty well. I, uh, I like how it keeps the screen adjusted for different lighting conditions uh, but for this I want to keep it turned off so we can adjust everything and sort of compare the two here. Let's go ahead and then, uh, turn the brightness up full blast on each of these. So one cool shortcut with the Kobo models is you can just uh, swipe up along the uh, screen right here and adjust the front light. So now that we got these both maxed out you can really see a difference in color. In person this one's got definitely more of sort of like a pinkish hue to it. Um, it's definitely more of a white coloration all over than the Kobo's. It has sort of a yellowish hue to it compared to uh, the Kindle. They vary a lot from device to device anyway, so it's kind of really hard to say definitively which uh, kind of front light you're going to get. So let's just sort of go with the different brightness settings here. Uh, let's go about halfway on both of these and then we can compare the halfway setting. So problem with this is though is my camera automatically adjusts for brightness. so. There's no way to disable that, so it's going to be kind of hard to get an exact idea of the front light with these two guys. The Kindle has more of a dim front light, kind of, but the Aura it can be totally turned off. And at the low, really low settings right there, it's really hard to get it under 5% with that dial right there. There we go, we got 4%. We got a 3 on the Kindle, so this is a really low setting on both of them. And... <clears throat> I mean, it looks pretty much identical in person, but the Kindle screen is a little different color. The Kobo Aura screen does look lighter in this instance. It does have a little bit lighter background than the Kindle's does. About th third brightness. Yeah, on these lower settings, the Kindle seems more subdued in person a little bit than the Kobo's. I mean, they're not really comparative as far as the settings go. 
Okay, so I switched sides with these because the uh, shadow is getting up here in the corner. Uh, let's go ahead and talk about the uh, software differences between these two. So uh, they have a lot of the same features. What it comes down to is basically the Kobo with it. It supports EPUB, of course, and it also has more font adjusting options. You've got all these fonts on the font list, and you can sideload your, side your own fonts on here as well. So the Kindle, you've got these six font choices and these uh, eight font sizes, whereas the uh, the uh, Kobo Oro has a lot more font sizes, like 24 font sizes. We got more line spacing and margin adjustments, and you also got the justification adjustment. So, as far as the uh, settings go, uh, on-screen adjustment settings for the text. Obviously, the Kobo Aura, the Kobo software, it does have a lot more uh, advanced settings. And you can also one thing that I really like is that you can customize the font in here to make it bolder. So you can get nice bold fonts. That's kind of one thing that I've always been annoyed with the Kindle. Is the fonts are always just kind of a little too spindly for my taste sometimes. Um, not, a lot of them aren't bad. I mean, they look super clear on this uh, high resolution screen. I just wish that there was a boldness option like there is here on the Aura H2O because it does, as you can see, how much darker that text looks when you go ahead and get the uh, bolding option enabled. So both devices kind of have this estimated reading timer. Down here on the Kindle it shows seven minutes left in chapter and if you tap on it it'll show you the time left in the book. Uh, the Kobos they have that's sort of a setting as well but it's a little bit more advanced. You get like this layout. You can customize what you want to appear on here in the settings menu if you want it to show like different percentages or if you want it to show minutes read or whatever. So yeah, you got more options with the Kobo as far as the estimated reading timer goes. Uh, the Kobo has this beyond the book feature that shows key terms and like related titles in the ebook. Um, the Kindle has uh, the x-ray feature which is just a little more useful because it actually uh, lists uh, characters in the book and then you can like get a brief description of the character and see where it appears in the book. So uh, where the uh, key terms on here it references Wikipedia and you can get information. It opens up the web browser if you want to go ahead and launch Wikipedia. So the Kindle has obviously the Wikipedia reference too. Anytime you hi highlight anything you get the option to reference Wikipedia so you can just look it up within the ebook right there. So both devices have the notes and highlights. If you hold down, you can drag the little line for the highlights. You can add notes. The same with the Kindle. Of course, you got the usual settings for that. The Kindle adds some additional stuff. Uh, so you can share on Facebook with this one. In this one, you could share on Facebook, Twitter, and Goodreads. Uh, the Kindle also has this instant translations where if you just hit that, you can get the translation. Uh, where the Kobo, if you want the translation, I think you can only do one word at a time. That's a name, so that's not going to be a translatable word, but we can open one of these other words, and then when it pops up the dictionary, you can go ahead and choose different um, translation dictionaries as well. I do get no definition found a lot. I mean, without, why wouldn't that be in the dictionary? So I don't really understand what that is. Uh, the deal with that is on the Kobo devices. I keep getting that error. All right, so one of the other features the Kindles offer is they do have landscape mode for eBooks, so you can switch over uh, to portrait or landscape view from portrait if you want to. Whereas the Kobo devices, they only offer that uh, portrait view for eBooks, though you can switch over to landscape with PDFs and comics. So when it comes to the home screen, we got kind of a different layout here. The Kindle uses a standard image home screen. Um, you can also switch over to list view if you want, and then you got the tiled view on the Kobo devices where it shows all your recent activity like everything like web browser gets added to this and also shows additional stuff like uh, recommendations that get added the library books get added shows like the notes added and stuff like that on here so then you can also go to the regular library view which is more like uh, that setup is on the Kindle so with the Kindle you can switch back and forth between the covers and that and this one it also has the cover view and the list view the list view on this one though gives uh, more information as far as like the percentage read the size of the file and the format of the file. So uh, we've got a couple of different sorting options on here as well. So you can sort by file and file size uh, where the Kindle doesn't have those options. It just has the authors. Though you can sort by collections and then you can sort further sort by the different sections. Both of them have some different sections. This one you can sort by read and finish and stuff like that. Uh, but there are the different sections over here for like uh, books, previews, and collections. Uh, and then the Kindle obviously it sets everything up on the cloud too. So uh, the Kindle it has Goodreads integration. That is another difference with it. They both have like a web browser and can install some games and stuff like that. But uh, I mean the reading experience is uh, very similar. I mean the it just comes down to like your personal preference really. Uh, the Kindle with the higher resolution screen and it has this little navigation feature down here so if we pop this open on the Kindle it gives us this little thing we can jump by chapters and you can scan through here so the Kobo's they have the little chapter jumper too you can just 
open up this little guy right here and jump by tapters and open the table of contents. I never quite understood why the table of contents isn't accessible from this window on the Kindle, but it has its own section over here in the go to section. So we can go over there and access notes and whatnot. So it's very similar uh, as far as the features are concerned on these two devices. So this is a quick look at just sort of an image on each device and it's just a little bit darker and a little more detailed on the Kindle with the higher resolution screen. The The main thing I can tell is just it's a little bit darker in areas and just like a couple of these harder to read names it's a little bit clearer on the Kindle so it's just sort of a, one of those subtle details with the higher resolution screen where the fine details are a little bit more clear. So I'm going to go ahead and wrap up this review right here. It's already starting to get really long so uh, check out the ebookreader.com for additional information and full reviews on these devices and comparisons between the other e-readers on the market. So uh, you guys have a good day and thank you for watching.